Welcome to this video supporting chapter 7 of my Absolute Beginners book for iOS development. In this chapter and in this video you're going to be taking a look at some of the UI controls that are available to you as an iOS developer. So let's first take a look at the segmented control and how to use the UI segmented control. So I'm going to create a new application. I'm going to make it a single view application. I'm just going to call it segmented control test. You can leave organization name and company identifier, or you can change them to whatever you like. Make sure you leave class prefix empty and make sure devices is set for iPhone. Press next, and then the next dialog will ask, where do you want to put it? I'm just gonna put it on the desktop and make sure that the Git repository is unchecked. So I'll press create, my application will be created for me. If any of the steps that I'm going to do here are unfamiliar, I'd recommend that you uh, go back and look at earlier chapters in the book or the earlier videos that support them, because some of this I'm going to be moving through a little bit more quickly. So next we're going to take a look at the storyboard for the application. That's main.storyboard, and when the designer loads that, we're going to add a UI segmented control to that. Now you can find the segmented control by scrolling down the list and finding it like this, or of course you can just type segment or something like that into the search box. Now drag the UI segmented control onto your design surface and space it out nicely using the guideline margins. And now you see you have a segmented control that gives you like first, second, and these are buttons that you can press to you know, change things within the view. The number of segments that are available to you are found in the attributes inspector. So you click this little icon here and you'll see segments here and it defaults to two. I could, for example, change that to three by moving the roller up, or I can just have one segment. Well, you can't go down below two because then it wouldn't be a segment, it would be a button. So you have a minimum of two, but you can change three, four, five, whatever. Of course, after a while, if you have too many segments, then you're probably using the wrong control unless you have graphics in here. So let's change it so that we have three segments. And so now we see my segmented control has them spaced out evenly. So my first segment is called segment zero, and you'll see that its title is first. If I come in here and I say blue, then segment zero becomes blue, the title becomes blue, and we can see on here that we have blue. Ditto if I change it to red, we have the same thing. If I want to change the second segment, I drop down this drop down box just like this, and I can change it to green. And then for the third segment, I can drop it down, and then I can change that to blue. So now I have three segments called red, green, and blue. So in the next section, let's take a look now. We will um, wire up this control, we'll set an action for this control so that when the user presses one of the segments then an event gets fired. So let's take a look at how to do that. So to do that we'll just get the view out of the way and we'll open up the assistant. And as before and as usual the assistant seems to default to opening onto the M file. Let's open it onto the H file so that we can see our header. And what we're going to do is we're going to create both an outlet and an action for the segmented control. So I'll control drag over onto the header and I have an outlet and I'm going to call my outlet uh, color chooser. And then I'll also create an action and the action, um, this is the first time actually we've been creating an action on something other than a button. And usually on the button it's the touch up inside but with the segmented control there are different events as you can see. And the best event really to use here for our application is when the value changes. So when the user touches something and we've changed from one value to another, the value changed event will fire. And we'll set up an action for that and we'll call that color chosen. So the user has chosen a new color. So the action has been created for us. And if I go back to my code file to my view controller.m, we can see that it's here. Color chosen has been set up for us. So what are we going to do? Um, so the one thing that we um, obviously we say we're going to change the um, obviously the color that we select there should it implement something. So we'll change the background color of the view. So for example, if I said something like self dot view dot background color equals something, and the way the easy way to do that is UI color is an abstract class that I can pass something to like this red color. And that's creating a new instance of a color class that has been initiated with red and it's changing the background color of the view to red. So if I run this, obviously it's going to change it to red regardless of the color. We'll update that in a moment, but I just want to show the changing of the color. So it's building, the simulator has launched, and let's see what happens. 
So now the uh, simulator is running and we can see that my segmented uh, control is set up. Um, it's selected default is the, um, is the zero segment in this case, which is red. And whenever I click anything, the entire thing's going to change to red because that's the only color that I had put in there. So let's get, go back and edit our color chosen now to do something else. So the selected segment of the UI control is accessible using the selected segment index property. So I can say something like this, int r equals color chooser, because that's what we decided to call it, dot selected segment index. Okay, I'm getting a warning there because it actually returns an ns integer and I'm using um, just an integer, as well as the warning that I haven't used my integer yet. But I can then say something like switch or the switch statement is something that's available in C and Java languages um, that allows you to perform a number of different actions based on changes in a value. So instead of saying, if it's zero, do this, if it's one, do that, if it's two, do this, I can just say switch it. And then in the case that it's zero, I'll say self dot background, whoops, self dot view dot background color equals UI color red color. <coughs> red color and then I have to break and it's one I'll say self dot view dot background color equals UI color I think our second one was green there's a number of colors are built in uh, with built-in keywords like this or you can mix your own colors if you understand how to do RGB or ARGB values and then case two I'll say self dot view dot background color equals UI color blue color and break out of there and that should do it. So now I'm saying, OK, give me a number, which is the selected segment index. It's going to be zero, one or two. And then based on that value, set a color, make it red if it's zero, green if it's one or blue if it's two. So let's run the app. Green changes it to green, blue changes it to blue, red changes it to red. And of course, when we first started up, red was selected, but the background color was white because we didn't have an initial case in here. But we can do something like in the view did load, we can just say self dot view dot background color equals UI color red color, something like that. And now if I stop my app and start it running again, it should look better. Now it begins with as red, and I can change green, blue, green, red, whatever, and change the background. So that's a quick tour of the UI segmented control. Um, this is available in chapter seven of the book, and um, we'll, in the rest of the book, or the rest of the chapter also goes through some several other controls, and we'll take a look at those controls in other videos.